How's it going and welcome to the Guitar Effects. My name's Rob. In this video, I'm going to be talking about this, the Boss IR200 Amp and Impulse Response or Cabinet Modeler, okay? Um, before I do, as always, I'll ask you to please like and subscribe. So what this is, it is a box that emulates having an amplifier uh, and, a, and a speaker cabinet. Um, and you put it somewhere in your signal chain with your pedal board and you use it to emulate uh, an amp and a speaker cabinet, I guess. Um, it's one of many pedals that do this that have been around for a couple of years now. The Strymon Meridium is probably the most well-known and widely used version. This is Boss's answer to it, I think is out about a year, maybe two years. It's very impressive. Um, I'm becoming a bit of a Boss fanboy, you know. Their pricing is very reasonable. Their technology is fantastic. They're, as always, very very robust, roadworthy, and, and rugged. And they put stuff on their pedals that, from a usability point of view, is just really clever. Like, the fact that this has a screen, compared to the Iridium not having a screen, I think allows it to have way more functionality than the Iridium has. Those are more options. So anyway, um, yeah, it's an impressive pedal. So just to get into it quickly, what is it? So, okay, you have... The ability to select between i think about five or six different amplifiers you've got endless cabinets actually you don't have endless cabinets you've endless mic combinations on six or seven different cabinets which do massively vary the sound you've got ambience here which is reverb there's three different types of reverb studio hall plate maybe i can't remember and then you've got memories here and i think it'll store 127 memories and then there is gain volume bass middle and treble Okay, on all on the front panel, which is really, really useful. Then on the back, there is an input. There's a send and return, so you can use this. Not only, you know, you don't only use it to put effects in the effects loop. Uh, this is part one of two videos about this pedal. The other one is going to be a video about my new pedal board where I use this and the OD200, along with the HX effects for my new gigging pedal board. Those three things together are very powerful. This having an effects loop when you're using it in the loop of something else, the effects loop is very, very important. So I'm gonna be using this in the effects loop of my HX effects and then controlling every preset from my HX effects. Without the, the effects loop, I would def by default have to put this whole thing, the preamp, the reverb, and the speaker cabinet at the end of my, of my chain, which in certain circumstances wouldn't really work. It does work really, really well now because of that effect loop. I'm able to wire it correctly in terms of the signal chain. So the send and return is very impressive. Then it has left and right outputs, left being mono, right being stereo, okay? On the side then it has, oh sorry, also on the back it has MIDI in and MIDI out in the form of those mini jacks, you know, the, the what is it called? Eight inch, I think, um, headphone socket basically, small headphone socket. On the side it has auxiliary in and phones out and it has control in. So you can use this with an external switcher to either turn it on and off, uh, go up and down presets, or turn on the, the solo boost, which is the same exact same as you're using, but up by a prescribed level that you can control inside. And then you can also use it to turn on and off the global EQ, which you could use as a mid boost, for example. Really, really powerful stuff. Then that's kind of the, the general workings of it. Like I said, it is a amp in a box now okay something i want to clarify amp in a box in terms of pedals is something that's been around for a long time and what an amp in a box generally is is a distortion pedal that has a characteristic of an amplifier this is not an amp in a box this is a amp modeler in a box so this models the whole amplifier amps in a box turn your amplifier into the, the sound of the amp they're emulating this replaces your amp it's a different thing and i think people using the term amp in a box for this certainly in the context of what i understand to mean is actually wrong this is not an amp in a box, this is a amp simulator. So I guess then uh, the first thing we should do is just take a listen to it. Uh, so here's the audio demo. Okay, so how I'm gonna demo this um, IR200 is I'm going from this Telecaster and I'll explain why I've chosen this guitar in a sec via a little wireless lead into the IR200 and straight out of the IR200 stereo into my interface, right? Um, I've chosen the Telecaster because I find with modelers a standard style Telecaster, especially with this really shrill bridge pickup, it seems to be the hardest sound to get sound really good, especially compared to a humbucker in a modeler. So um, I'm, I've chosen to play the Telecaster for that reason to really put this thing through its paces. Um, so 
So how I have it set at the moment is, I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna go down to all the different mount models and demo what they sound like to the same IOR. I always play with a 112 cabinet, um, mainly due to like, you know, space availability reasons in transport and on stages, but that's the sound I've become used to. So I'll be demoing the whole thing to the natural 112 cabinet with the 57 on axis, okay? It's like the most basic IOR that they have, I think. That's the bridge pickup with the gain on three quarters and the level on three, well, the level's about straight up actually. That's the bridge pickup of Tally. Incidentally, this Telecaster is a Mexican, I can't remember the name of the series, it's a series before the current series of like Mexican 60s style Telecaster. <laughs> So I have the gain on that pushed to the, uh, say, two thirds position. That's the bridge pickup. Middle pickup. And that's the neck pickup. It's very much a pedal platform kind of sound. It really does sound like really neutral and, as it says, natural. So that's the natural amp, right? So leaving the settings the same, I'm gonna to move to the JC120. To me, it kind of gets a bit more sort of brittle. I've never played a JC120, I don't think. Maybe once abroad at a gig I did. Um, and it's not my, really my thing. Middle pickup. Again, another very clear sounding amp and the neck pick or the bridge pickup. Um, I have the hall reverb on a 25, which is like, you know, a quarter of the way up. Now we go on to the Fender Twin, this is where it really starts to get harsh. Turn this down a bit. Okay, so before I do this, this is the... This is the reason why presets are so important on something like an, an amp modeling pedal if you want to use different amps. I've left all the settings the exact same there, but because of the EQ difference in basically the way the EQ is, is sounds from amp to amp, I'm clipping my interface there. So I've, what I've got to do is roll back the level on this a little bit. Now that's way too shrill, but if you roll the tone back on the guitar, That one has the nicest compression of the clean sense to me. Okay, so that's the twin combo sound. And next we come on to the diamond amp and what's really interesting this is their vox emulation what's really interesting to me here i don't think you know this works at all without the right ior so i listen to this Just don't like that sound at all but i'll come back to that later as the amp that i show to demonstrate what the different um what the different iors do so moving on from there we come to the tweed combo this is one of my favorite on something i can bump up the level here a little bit let me just Really beautiful sound. Roll the tone on the guitar back slightly. There's 
this show, I'm on the medium gain setting, and I'll get into what that means in a few minutes. But if I roll the gain up on this, it's actually a really lovely gain sound. <laughs> For a twin combo for a clean sound and that for a dirty sound, I mean, you're well on your way to having like a really usable palette of sounds. And that's with one really simple IR. <laughs> Try rolling the volume back. up with the volume knob as well so really another really the tweed combo is a great amp model and that's again using the same 112 ior so moving on to the x high gain amp model um one thing that i found interesting was x high gain is like boss's own not modeled at least not said to be modeled on any particular amplifier it's a, it's a high gain sound they made up themselves normally i just glance over high gain things high gain things really aren't my thing if i want a high gain thing i use like a mid gain amp with a pedal in front of it but I really like this. That is as much or even more gain as I would ever use. And the gain here, I'll bring it back a little bit. Really great sound. So for kind of riffy stuff. Cleans up lovely too. Really great high gain amp model. For leads and then I pick up. It's a really, really great amp model. Um, I'll definitely be employing that. So then, after that, we go to the British stack sound. It's incredibly toppy on a, on a, a Telecaster back pickup. And again, I think this is where the, the IOR is gonna be really crucial. So I have found that um, rolling the treble back a little, rolling the mid in a little bit more. <laughs> neck pickup kind of almost audio save kind of thing so for that like I mean he used a JCM 900 uh, or JCM 800 amp Get a bit midi and kind of honky in the back pickup to change the IR with that but I don't want to get into that now I want to just do that separately and then that's the last of the amps after that you're into bass amps oh no there's a, a an uber shallow metal sound so I do not play metal I've never played metal I never will play metal so the closest thing I would be would be a band that I liked in my youth from Northern Ireland called Therapy and they had this kind of metal song. But I think I'm going to need to give it a bit more volume. Drop my pick. Roll off the tone maybe. That's 
kind of as high gain as I would ever get. And even they were sort of like a punk metal kind of band. Amazing band, really, really cool. <laughs> So that kind of thing, this amp model does work well. So that's all the different amp models going through the 1x12 natural 57 off axis, really kind of standard sounding IO. So what I'm going to do is go back to the diamond model, which didn't sound good in this context, I didn't think. So we go back to the diamond amp. Again, the levels just go completely mental when you switch from model to model. So I've got to bring this back. Okay, so maybe a little bit less level. This is just my standard Telecaster bridge pickup, which is like meant to be played through a Vox AC30. So I'm gonna switch down straight to the, the AC30. Gone through all the different 212s. The AC30 212, which is here. Right, the first one, this is just, it says 212 diamond, which is like an AC30 cab with a, a 57 off axis, on axis, I should say. So it gets more mid rangey and tames some of the high end. The EQ is doing here. I'm going to bring the mid, I'm going to bring the bass in, bring the mid back a little bit. Okay, so if I switch it down to the same thing but with an off axis mic, loses some of the top end, which is characteristic of moving the microphone away from the cone. Then we go to a dynamic 421. So more kind of low mids, same thing with off axis. And then we go to a condenser. Very voxy. Condenser off axis. Too dull now. We go to a different condenser, an 87. Again, nice. Off axis. Too dull. Ribbon. So there's a load of more mics of mic position emulations of the cabinet. What I'm going to do is go right through all the cabinets until I get to the Celestian ones. There's so many cabinets. Into the base cabinets now, I think. I'm into the Celestians now. Hang on, I'm going back to the start of them. So this is a cream back by Celestian. <laughs> Way more kind of honky mid range. Really nice top end. Same thing. This is a Ruby. And it's got multi, which I presume it has a multi combination of mics. Just see how, what a dramatic difference the different IORs make. And then we go on to the Celestian Blue, which is the Celestian's kind of, the traditional, uh, the traditional model that's used with an AC turning. So loads of different uh, 
AMP modeling, or sorry, IO modeling stuff going on there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you what the um, what the foot switch does. And um, so really quickly, right, saying on that AMP model, I'm going to put it back, I think, to the Ruby. I have set it up so that the first switch here, as you can see, um, the first switch does the volume boost, okay? Which is a solo boost. On, I have it absolutely cranked, right? And then the other one does a mid boost. So yeah, as you can see, the foot switch brings a lot of stuff into play. You could use it for a solo boost and then you could use it to change the EQ whatever way you wanted with a simple two button foot switch. I think with various different presets and that foot switch, I could definitely get through a gig in an emergency situation just using this unit going into the PA. So, as you can see, I didn't even get into some of the features there. I didn't demonstrate the global EQ, although I did show it in the, in the volume boost. So I so showed you all the different uh, IR options and stuff like that and all the different amp models. One thing I would say about this, I think this is a particularly good amp modeler solution. Like, it can do absolutely everything you need it to do. The only downside to these, once impulse responses and like mic in the center or mic to the side, this style of microphone, this style of microphone, you know, the amount of different impulse responses there are for effectively one cabinet on each amp model. I get into a bit into option paralysis with that stuff. I think if they, I think if they had one or two impulse responses per amp, like a bright one and a dark one maybe, that's characteristic of the cabinet that goes along with an amp, it would be more than enough for me. I think the endless tweaking that you can get into with the global EQs and stuff, it's a little bit too capable. Because you could get lost and find, oh, that's not the right impulse response. Oh, I prefer it on axis. I prefer it off axis. It stops you from playing, I think. Um, but I've spent a bit of time with it and I found stuff I like. Like, I really like the tweed amp. I like it for slightly broken up and I like it for gainy. And I'm liking that X high gain amp for like high gain stuff. And I like the twin for clean. And that's where I'm going to use it. And um, I, I'll show in, in the other pedal board demo um, the way I'm going to use it, which will be the next video after this one. So yeah, I actually have the Nux Amp Academy over there that I got recently as well. So I'm gonna try that next and see how that fares against this because there's a significant price difference between them. And, and like, not Nux, New X make great stuff, but Boss is kind of in a different league, I think. I think Boss is like one of the leading pedal manufacturers. And no, they're not super trendy or anything, but that doesn't, I'm not interested in, in having the, the most important, most trendy stuff at all. It's just not the kind of player I am. I really like what Boss is doing from a functionality point of view. That external control switch is priceless, in, in my opinion, is in a pedal like this. And the MIDI being small in the back as well. Brilliant. So there you go. IR200. Any questions about it, stick them in the comment section below. Um, and thanks for watching if you've gotten this far. And if you have and you've enjoyed it, I'll ask you to please like and subscribe. And I guess, yeah, I'll see you in another video again soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.